10 years, he was having an affair with a Russian lady. He stole nearly a million pounds off her. But yeah. your opinion on relationships. Let's hear it from the woman point of view. It always scares me a little bit. His mum and dad had been together for like 30 years. She was passing away. We'd been together for so long that it'd never happen. And obviously when it did happen, it was like... Is the NHS a business? Some people go into NHS because it's a really safe option. Not necessarily to make them happy and the money that they're actually making. But I can imagine it's like nothing's wrong with them. They're healthy and wow. it's just like, bam, people <coughs> pass away right in front of my eyes. Have you seen a pattern of where you see these people dying? Definitely like your mental health and like phones. Stephen Bartler says yeah. that the Gen Z's are lazy. And they're like, well, I want this now. But you can't even get to the gym for like six. Like you're getting up at the weekends at like 12. So somebody would have to be at least your height. I mean, maybe that is because of... You Could you really forgive compare. somebody who had a one night stand? I have. Did listened. you get over it? I didn't. It's happened to me a few times as well. Wow. Is the Tinder, Hinge, um, even Instagram. The whole culture of cheating almost accelerated. How yeah. many messages do you get a day of guys I mean going... Welcome back to Take A Seat. Boy, have I got a guest for you today. She's a supermodel who's now going into auctions, buying and selling properties. Not only that, she's been offered various jobs. I know a lot of you are complaining to say, I never get offered a job. That's why I'm on dole money. Well, she's going to tell you all about how to network, get in the right rooms and earn that P. And the biggest thing you're going to get from this podcast is actually we're going to deep dive into how a Gen Z thinks and how a millennial thinks like myself and see, is the world going in the right way? So without further ado, let me introduce Lucy Taylor. Hello, Sean. Hello. Thank you so much. You're for looking very inviting me. Thank you. Come very on, look much. at you, supermodel. Thank you. How Thank tall you are you? Very much. Five eleven. With these 5 shoes, 11. I'm probably about six foot. So wow. yeah, I definitely don't blend in, which is a, I hated it wow. going up, but now I'm in the sort of property world, networking. It it does people remember me because yeah. they can't not see me. <laughs> They're just like, hi. <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> literally, yeah. But like, do you, do you think that? Um, do you think that intimidates men? You know what? I initially, when I was going into it, I thought this is going to be very intimidating for a lot of people, especially younger people. Not so much older men, but like sort of younger boys. But I've found the complete opposite. I think people sort of warm to me. I think I'm a very sort of nice person and I always approach people in a very nice way. So obviously going into like my first networking event and seeing like, it was all men, like not one woman was there, my first ever networking event. Where and was, I was that? Thinking, it was in Birmingham at PIN. Okay. And I was, oh my God, I was so taken back. And I thought, right, okay, I need to, you know, just be myself, not put any like front on, like a lot of, you know, property gurus say that you need to just be yourself and authenticity mm -hmm. sells so much more. And I walked in and I just, I found myself going up to like three men like they're middle-aged and just interrupting their conversation. And one of them turned to me and was like, fair play to you because I don't, I don't even know like salesmen that wouldn't even dream of coming up to like guys in suits looking like us and just interrupting us. So you see these three men in suits and they're like having their conversation. Yeah. What does Lucy Taylor come and walk and go? <clears throat> it is, it is that. And you know, when you're walking up to them, they almost, it's like... They almost just turn to you and sort of look at you like, you know, they almost sort of stop talking anyway because you're approaching them. And then it gives you a bit of a window of space to say, oh, I apologize for interrupting, but could I just introduce myself? And I think the whole nature of networking, that's what you have to do. You can't just sit back and wait for someone to stop talking because people there like to talk and talk and talk. And when you're, op when you're asking open-ended questions, oh my God, you could be standing there for hours just listening to someone because everyone loves talking about themselves, don't they? So you ask them a few questions and it's just like, poof, you hear that, the whole life story. And I'm just like trying to soak it all in and pick little bits of stuff that applies to me directly. But it's, um, yeah, I, what I find difficult is breaking that conversation and going to someone Same else. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really that interested. <laughs> yeah, it is. Sometimes it is that and it's like, <laughs> 
oh no, how do I, how do I do? Because I'm way too polite. I think I'm too polite sometimes. So I find myself going, oh, I just need to go to the toilet or oh, I just need everyone watching this. If I, said, <laughs> I need to go to the toilet, they're going to know now. Um, or going to get a drink or something. I think it's the politest way. Or I heard a new one of just asking for someone's Instagram or socials. And then saying, it was lovely to meet you. I'm going to continue my networking and then just go on, which a lo load of people are going to be like, yeah, of course, I you need know, to work the room. So a lot of celebrities go to school for that. You know that? Really? So, uh, do, do you know Idris Elba? Yeah, yeah, Well, I yeah. met his wife, Sabrina. Amazing. And um, she was at a talk and she's like, hey, have I met you before? <laughs> and I'm like, um... You might have seen my podcast, yeah, you know, yeah. come back in, you know, come on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. she's like, oh, maybe, sure. So it's Sean, right? I was like, yeah, cool. So let's take a picture <laughs> together. So we took the picture and she goes, and I was like, I took the, I took the biscuit because I was so confident in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah, everybody was a bit like, uh, should we ask or not? I was like, no, 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 lighting's not good here. We got to get good lighting. She goes, okay, sure. Are we in front of the toilets? And I was like, yeah, we're in front of the toilets. So we got the picture and she was just like, great to meet you and she was just like switched off, off and gone and, and gone. I was like right she's practiced that yeah yeah you know? so yeah, like yeah. you say that 100%. is an art it is an art and especially to not get I don't know to leave a lasting impression in a good way because mm -hmm. you never know when then people are going to come back around in your story and you're going to need them so like just being nice and friendly and polite to everyone mm -hmm. and just even people that aren't you don't find as interesting just still giving them the same energy the same mm -hmm. vibes because they might know someone that might know someone that could get you to where you want to be it's all about meeting for me anyway the right people 100 percent. and is does that person look like a certain somebody is it the one who's got the best suit jacket or is it someone who's really scruffy and your does does looks matter does appearance matter like when you're networking are you going to go to the best looking one or how do you filter out who you're going to speak to in that room and you know what yeah so initially i'd say like i'm not into watches but i know yeah guys are really really big onto their watches <laughs> and so like initially it was yeah the best suited and booted the best watch in a sense I'd just look at one I wouldn't even know what it was um but someone who looked the most presentable I would just gravitate towards but then throughout my time of networking I've realized you can't really judge anyone by what they're wearing so I went to one event and um I went actually to speak to the guy that was running the event to give me a little few indicators of who's the best to speak to that's what I normally do and he pointed to this one guy and he was like, he's a managing director of a massive bank. Like he's a multi-millionaire because he's got properties, he's invested into businesses. And he was just wearing a pair of jeans and a really scruffy plain t-shirt. And it was almost like he was trying to do that in a sense so people wouldn't, you know, if he came with his Rolex on and all this sort of stuff, he'd just be probably like Bombarded. ambushed with loads of people. So obviously going to speak to him and, hearing about how he got to where he got to. Main reasons, just being a nice, polite person, meeting the right people and just getting himself out there and not keeping himself, say like he was from a, quite a small town up north. And as soon as he could, he just got himself in the cities. He got himself in the networking events within the cities and was just constantly networking, networking, networking. And throughout the time that I've been speaking to people, whether they've been dressed in suits, whether they've been business owners, mortgage brokers, they've all got to where they've got to with the help of people around them. Not one person has ever said to me, oh, I've got to this part and I've never, ever spoken to anyone, never bothered with anyone. They've always had a really good group of people around them mm -hmm. to elevate them, which is so important. Yeah. I mean, um, has that changed your perception on who to network with and uh, sort of ultimately don't judge a book by its cover? Yeah, 100%. Just speaking to absolutely everyone and not getting too... <clears throat> I mean, when you find someone really interesting, you do just find yourself speaking and speaking and speaking mm -hmm. to that one person. You've got a limited time in there. Mm -hmm. So I always try and make a point to look at everyone. I'll scan the room and I'll almost try and set almost like a mental timer of how long I want with each person. Yeah. Um, so I'm getting the uh, most out of the event. It is. It literally <laughs> is. It literally is. But just not always go into someone 
and wanting something sure. just going to them and just being very natural and just being like just a conversation and I'm just interested in you and what you've done yeah Lucy you're um a stunning girl thank you thank yeah, you you're very you're really much. beautiful thank you're you. tall got yeah. lovely hair lovely figure lovely yeah. height lovely feet <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> but like you know do you think first of all does that make it easier for you to enter a group you know what I've, I do have to say it does mm -hmm. it really does and I think throughout my whole life probably everyone goes through a bit of an ugly phase don't they and luckily mine was in like high school <laughs> I'm happy about that and then suddenly when I grew up why was you why did you think you were ugly then because I was a bit chubby I had braces mm -hmm. my teeth weren't very good I was just the typical quiet that made me very introverted because mm -hmm. I wasn't confident in the way I looked so I think when I grew up and I came into myself I started going to the gym good diet um just presenting myself in a better way and a lot of people say oh well you know don't don't judge a book by its cover and everything because of you know can't judge by people what they wear and how they wear their makeup and stuff but when you do present yourself in a good way you feel amazing and then you have more confidence to go out there and do things do you feel more confident oh 100 percent. even with my heels on you know i would never in a million years wear heels mm -hmm. even like Why? three years ago because i got bullied when i was in like high school i think anything that's a little <laughs> bit out of the ordinary when you're in year 11 yeah high school is just like a big no-no mm -hmm. and you're gonna get absolutely crucified mm -hmm. for it and I did and it made me really like I wouldn't wear certain trainers with like a thick sole on it and I wouldn't do anything but now finding myself walking around London with heels on the amount of people that just like stare at me yeah. and that I've had people point at me and everything before and I look at them and like I'd be like I'd go into myself like a little shell before but now I'm like I feel proud of myself to be this tall and um, like you said, back to your question, being aesthetically pleasing does really help when you go to networking events. Um, and I guess it just, it tells people that you've got a lot of respect for yourself and you want to present yourself in a, in a sort of pleasant way. And without being really big headed, you know, I think if I was the opposite, opposite end, I was like quite overweight. I didn't, spots everywhere, no makeup on. Is that the sort of face of a business that you really want it's not you know you want like healthy sort of aesthetically pleasing sort of people and that's unfortunately it is we all know that's the world we live in so you think looks matter yeah 100 <clears throat> percent. and i know people all have opinions on that but i really do think well i have to sort of have an opinion on that as well and i believe that first of all if you can't show love to this vehicle, which is you, yes. how are you going to show love to anything outer yeah. to this? Now, I understand people have conditions. People 100%. have medical conditions. Of people course. have health reasons. Yeah. But the majority of the time, it's down to bloody laziness. <laughs> I'm too it lazy is. or I don't have the time. Yeah. But yeah. I'll happily play video games. games but yeah. I'll happily watch Netflix and just chill. I'm too tired because yeah. I've... Stop playing the victim mentality. Yeah, Stop yeah. saying that, you know, I can't do it because just be stronger than your excuses. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you know Taking what I mean? And responsibility. And how good do you feel when you go to the gym? Oh, amazing. Literally. And you know what? And a lot of people will be like, oh, yeah, you're just born like that. But honestly, the amount of hours I made? put into the gym. Is Lucy made? <laughs> I literally, I work really, really hard <clears> in the gym. What do you eat in a day? Oh my God, you know, I could show you pictures and you'd probably think it was a bit disgusting. But my mum, so she's got this book called Optimum Nutrition for the Mind. So I've been eating more from my brain and my body, all for the same thing. But I've cut out junk food. I literally, so the other day she made like a spinach and kale and um, ginger soup loads of other things in it all good stuff with like seeds and cheese and like i'll eat salads and try and get organic stuff it is more expensive but my my nan suffered from cancer twice about five years ago which type of cancer it was bowel cancer and breast cancer wow and i my my mum was just like massive dive into the whole nutrition mm -hmm. what you are is what you eat is what you are at the end of the day <coughs> so she 
she literally dedicated she still blessed does dedicate a whole life to making soups every weekend everything full of like turmeric and um just all the spices are meant to be 10 10 for your body aren't they for your skin and even like energy levels you know when I was younger and you know when you drive and you can oh my god like going to McDonald's is like an amazing thing in your life now because you could never do it before so you find yourself never walking like I used to walk everywhere as soon as you drive it's gone isn't it like you're driving everywhere I've got a shop about two minutes away from me and I drive and it's just like all these little things that you think, oh, it's fine, I'm only doing this for like two seconds or I'm only eating this for like this day. But then you realise that it's like halfway through the year and you've been living like that for six months Mm -hmm. and you feel like crap, like really, really bad. So like since the start of this year, I've just been full force into my brain sort of foods and I feel like my connections, my brain, my memory, my energy levels. You know, you used to get, do you ever get a dip throughout the day? When you sort of, I can imagine you're on the go all the time. But when you were a little bit younger, did you ever feel like it got to about three o'clock and you were like, oh, I can go to sleep right now. But like, it doesn't happen anymore. I, Never I feel that um, certain people say that, you know, we're hunter gatherers. Yeah. And when we eat, you know, it does certain things to make you feel sleepy after because you're supposed yeah. to recover after that. Yeah. So that's why people say, well, when it's lunchtime, yeah. why do I always feel tired and lethargic? Yeah. It's because... First of all, you're feeding yourself. All this sugar's coming into your body. Like, yeah. Well, it's being produced. It goes to your pancreas. Yeah. You release insulin and mm-hmm. it has all this energy and you're just sitting at a desk. Yeah. So then it tells yeah. you to use that energy around your gut mainly just to go to sleep. Sleep. And that's yeah. how we feel sleepy, apparently. Yeah. That's the yeah, science no, behind no, 100%. it. 100%. So if you like eat smaller portions, cut the sugars sugar. and like yeah. carbohydrates, which yeah. turn into sugar, yeah. apparently, you know, that keeps you more energetic and what i've done personally lucy is fasting yes um i don't know if you've ever tried it i have yeah i have yeah yeah yeah. i um i went for about six months and that 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 long because when your body's in a cycle of it you don't even feel hungry and the key is just being on the go and a lot of people are sat all day they're bored they don't like their jobs exactly even like i mean i work for the nhs and oh my God, the amount of chocolate and sweets and crisps all around the department is just unholy. It's, it's a bit crazy. weird, isn't it? In the NHS. I know, I know. Somewhere where they're supposed to help fix you yeah. and they're giving you the bloody sugar and going, yeah, here <laughs> yeah. you go. Yeah, I don't know how some of the people, I really don't know how they can confidently say go into a room with someone who is overweight and at risk of heart disease diabetes and say to them they need to lose weight when sometimes they're bigger than them yeah. and I'm thinking oh no I must that must feel so oh, uncomfortable <laughs> I know and I just think to myself god like wow but when you like when you look into it and the fundamentals of it I think a lot of people some people go into NHS because it's a really safe option not necessarily to make them happy don't get me wrong some people adore their jobs they wouldn't ever wish for anything else but some people are like oh it's safe you know I'll always have a job but it's Monday again and I've got to go to work again and I'm just like oh so very much an environment like working in there since I've been 16 has opened my eyes up to the realities of sometimes just never following your dreams and your passion and settling is the nhs a business yeah without a doubt without a doubt and i think the people on the surface level of it say the not surface level but the people that are on the ground level the doctors the nurses that are working continuously to try and reach certain targets and try and make the data match with the expectations of above is really 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 difficult and and obviously they'd argue that it is for flow and consistency and efficiency but then when you see the actual because obviously you know I'm, I'm not, I don't have access to the data and the figures and the money that they're actually making but I can imagine it's like an extortionate amount but it's very much like under wraps do you know what I mean so like nothing would ever be accessible to anyone that's probably even working for them it's probably like very high high management but the stress that I see day in day out of especially like doctors and junior doctors 
it's just absolutely crazy. There's no like incentive for to even be a doctor anymore. Like mm -hmm. there's thousands of doctors, <coughs> which I had no idea. I spoke to a junior doctor literally two days ago and he was telling me that there is massive, massive amount of doctors, tr fully trained, no jobs for them. They're not opening any jobs for any doctors because they don't want to pay them. And I spoke to a doctor and he told me that on his junior doctor wage, when he's in the A&E, he's on 14 pounds an hour. And that's three pound more than me. And I'm a progress chaser in the wow. A&E. And then when he's low come in, he gets 50 pounds an hour. The difference is just staggering. When he's low? When he's low come in. What does so that this mean? is when the A&E is in like really desperate need of doctors mm -hmm. and they're off sick they're striking like a supply teacher yeah yeah they'll pay <clears> massive <throat> amounts for them to be there because if they weren't there they only wouldn't even be able to op be wow. opened so it's, it's more incentive for a doctor to be on the sub bench yeah and go yeah call me when you just need call me. me when you need me I'll yeah make my money that way exactly i'll have more free time yeah you know it's, it's crazy how generations and how life has changed Massive. we've entered a brand new generational sort of era of wealth shift yeah where you've got people who are just doing rent to rent strategies <laughs> yeah. earning <laughs> 10 grand amounts. profit a year scaling yeah. to seven properties yeah all automized where a cleaner's going in and out mm -hmm. earning 70 grand more than a doctor. Yeah. How does yeah. this work? Crazy. I know. That's what I mean. I just don't understand the incentive for them. <clears throat> but then when I speak to them, some of them, money isn't even in the question. They do not give about money. They really are just there mm -hmm. for the people to help. I think people are just driven or they're not. And if they're driven for money purposes they realize very quickly that they've made the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. And even going to some networking events, I've seen, you know, doctors and even nurses get to high positions, invest their money into property with the intentions of leaving the NHS or going private. And obviously them sort of roots seem to be more up and coming as the years go on because you don't get treated very well. And everyone just completely they just don't use the NHS properly. Like people are coming in with sore toes and just things that are GP worthy. Yeah, they won't go to the GP, they'll go straight to the A&E. And it's just completely like, there's never any room for anyone. We're so short on beds and money and everything. Was you in this environment around COVID? Yes. Okay, yes. So, so did you take your COVID jabs? I did. Okay. I was the first, one of the first batch within the UK. We, our hospital had, because North Staffs in Stoke is one of the major trauma hospitals and they've got some of the only specialities in the whole country that are actually there. So they got the first batch and then it automatically goes over to Stafford. So before all the conspiracies and everything sort of came out, we almost got like bullied into taking it. Um, and it was a case of, there was a sort of story that came out to give to all the staff members in to both hospitals that I actually think it was a national thing where you'd lose your job if you didn't take the job. And there was doctors, obviously I took mine first and there was doctors going, I'm not taking this. Like there is no way on earth, like, and there was more and more and more. And I was hearing this more and more and more. And I was thinking, oh my God, like I'm not taking another one. I think I took two and then I stopped there. They left it to the last day that it was mandatory to get the jab to abolish that rule. So they got basically the most that they could get to get the jab. And then they probably always had the plan to get rid of it anyway, because they couldn't lose half the doctors within the NHS. Do you think it has adverse effects in that jab? Um, I mean, if I'm honest with you, I've spoken to people that have known people that have got problems ever since having that jab, but any close family members, fingers crossed, I've not actually experienced anything firsthand, but I have heard 
a lot of stories about people having heart problems, probably a lot in the news, just similar things like strokes and... Because they have come up with an emergency fund to say they're going to compensate some people. Oh, really? Yeah, so Rishi Sunak was on this talk show and he goes, since I've taken this jab, this has happened, that's happened, this happened, this happened to my family. And he goes, I'm really sorry, I don't know your place, your, it's not my place to say that, you yeah. know, what's affected you personally. However, we have bought up a, uh, this emergency fund that you can apply for and it was just a bit like well that money still ain't gonna fucking fix me no not at all not at all like some families are completely ruined do you know what i mean and i think i think the whole quickness of it was just way too yeah do you think it's something that could be sleeping like a sleeping giant inside your body that can be later on or do you think it's like gone in your system has gone out and if it's affected you it's affected you see you know what i think when you look at other things and you look at how different people's bodies are and how they react to different things, it could be a case of some people have had the effect straight away. Others might have it 10 years down the line. And I don't, obviously we're never going to see that sort of pattern until that time comes and we see. And then by that time, they're probably going to be like, oh, it was never that. That was like 10 years ago now. It would be something else. Do your diet mm. or your lifestyle or stress. Stress is a massive one that they put everything down to. Mm -hmm. Like we lost a lady only yesterday um, and she only went around for a CT scan. She was about 69 and... Um, it was just a heart attack, just random. She only came in for something really small and she just had a heart attack like that. And they put it down to like her stress and her job and how late in life she was working to such a intense sort of level. She was in sort of like a corporate business. So it was, um, that's what they put it down to. And um, husband said that she'd been really struggling over the last few weeks. So I think stress when they can't put it down to anything else, they'll be like, well, it's probably stress and a nervous breakdown. And they can't really like, they can't do an, um, you know, a body examination when they're passed away to know it was stress. So it's almost like an easier thing to just put that down to, if you know what I mean. Um, but seeing stuff like that since I've been 16, like I don't realise how much of a difference it's made to me as a person. And I think the reason why I've got into this so young is because I see all the time how quickly life can be taken away. And obviously a lot of people that are just living their daily life have probably never seen someone pass away. Mm -hmm. But I've seen like, God, over like hundreds of people <coughs> pass away right in front of my eyes, like from 26 to 30 to 40, all throughout mm -hmm. everyone's life. And that impact on your brain. Initially, you think, oh, it's life. You, you, you Obviously you get a bit upset with some cases, but you can't dwell on it because it is just the job but realizing when you're young you just think oh I've got all the time in the world yeah. like I'm like death doesn't even seem like a reality yeah it's true and when you see that so consistently you're thinking wow like I've got really no time to mess around life is short life is so short yeah. and people don't I think you, you say it but when you actually see it on a consistent level when it's so random as well, like nothing's wrong with them, they're healthy and right. it's just like, bam. And it's like, oh my God, like this could be me. Like I'm not going to be working a nine to five for someone yeah. else just to, cause I'm young and I don't have any experience. I'm just going to get out there and just give it my all and try mm. my best. I wanted to ask um, in terms of, you know, have you seen a pattern? Mm-hmm of where you see these people dying is there a pattern that you said hey over all these hundreds of deaths that's always been reoccurring or i've heard that you're starting to match up a chart that high medium low almost mm -hmm. every time when somebody's dying young it's because of this or could be this like diet or um you know genetics or stress like is mm -hmm. there a thing that keeps coming up that you think I've got to be really careful about that one thing all the time or be mindful of it. I think definitely like your mental health and like phones. Mm -hmm. Like I think you've got to be really careful to not let your phone use you and you use your phone. I've seen so many people, like a lot of especially young people are from like say overdoses or really a lot of stress like putting way too much pressure on themselves at a really mm. really young age and um when I'm speaking to their like 
parents and sisters and whatever, you know, it is a case of, oh, they weren't really happy. Like they were never really, really happy in their lives. And so a common thread in young people is definitely mental health is like a massive, massive thing. And just like abusing their bodies. So like when you're young, like I said, you think you can drink. Drinking sometimes leads to drugs and just doing stupid things, putting yourself in silly situations, which if you weren't in that group, if you weren't doing them things, you would never find yourself there. But because of how they feel, they go on Instagram, they see all these people living like luxury lives. And in reality, when you look at the whole world, we're living like some of the most amazing lives ever with the you know, access to just water and food and mm. having the ability to go to the cinema and just little things like that that we just think, oh, like, it's just nothing. Like, we've always had it on our doorstep. So the gratitude level is, like, on the floor. So then they try and chase these highs through alcohol and drugs and just putting themselves in silly situations and trying new things and thinking, oh, well... I'm not even too bothered about dying right now because I'm not happy anyway and I'm not happy with where my life trajectory is going. So then they'll just do things that are really, really stupid and, like I said, diet and just the, just abusing your body and not caring because there's no vision to what you want to do. And I think when you go to school and it's like a very, do you want to be a nurse? Do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be a lawyer? You don't get any other you get a very narrow selection of things to go into. And if you don't fit into that, then you're just sort of like disregarded. And some people really struggle with that. And then that stays with them their whole lives. Like, well, I don't really want to do this. I don't really want to do that. Some people are already suffering from, you know, social anxiety. So something like a networking event and getting yourself out there is someone's worst nightmare. But when you actually push yourself, and this is where like self discipline and like awareness comes in to just having to break the conscious cycle of being how you always are and then that only takes you just being accountable for how you are and wanting to change else you're never gonna get there mm -hmm. weird how <clears throat> school teaches you one route yeah. and it's almost brainwashed into you that that's 100%. the only route there yeah. is yeah you know um, because so many times I thought I knew more than my family, yeah. even though they were all entrepreneurs, they yeah. were in a shop. Yeah, they were yeah. like, this is what we've always done. Yeah. We've worked some uh, other places, we've bought this shop, and now we all do a shift in the <laughs> shop. We yeah. don't have to listen or answer to nobody. <laughs> no, no. We might not have this big title of a doctor or nurse, but we clear more than that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's a penny business, we've got to be here all the time, but we eat here together. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. associate here together. This yeah. is ours. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. I took it for granted, like running a shop at the age of 16, like, because I was there from eight. So I needed to fill up, fill up the cash machine, mm -hmm. um, how to do the pay point, the lottery mm -hmm. machine, mm -hmm. you know, or stock shelves, had to work at the VAT markups. Yeah, 20% like, yeah, on that. 35% for us divided by this many products I just thought, took it for granted and so, so, important. so running the shop is like hi you at Dawn how's it going <laughs> how's Kristen yeah. Yeah, your products there on the bottom shelf on the left like all of that I was like this is normal yeah, and then yeah. you step out into the corporate world and they're like oh he's picked that really fast he's, he, yeah. he can roll with the punches but yeah. Well, how do you get ready for that? I mean, you're in school and next minute, yeah, do your homework, do not do your homework, detention, cool. All right, you're going to mess your life up if you're not in college. Cool. Yeah. And then you go into, into a job. Mm -hmm. And so many times I've walked in, I walked into TK Maxx yesterday, yeah. yeah. And um, I always carry my gym bag. Every day I go to the gym. Yeah. Um, so I've always got a change of clothes and everything mm -hmm. in there, my, my wet wrapped up towel and my mm -hmm. little flip flops. So it's always really heavy. And uh, I went to CK Maxx. I don't like to spend a lot of money, but I do like to look nice. Yeah. I thought, yeah, that's a decent place. I picked up some nice tops from there last time. So I walked into the front and um, I saw a security guard. Now, the first time two weeks ago, I was like, bro, I really want to have a little look around, but I don't want to carry this fucker. You know? <laughs> and he goes, don't worry, sir. Just leave it there. It's fine. Yeah. Cool. So yesterday I go in now. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have little butchers. I've got 15 minutes for my, you know, where I need to get to. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find a nice top. It's always good to look in, you know, look yeah, nice yeah, yeah. and something fresh. So I walk in and this guy is just like this year, security guard, just sitting back. And I went, excuse me, bruv. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me that look. And I'm just like, 
just want to look at some stuff. Can I just quickly lose my leave my bad day? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, not doing that. I was like, mm. I said, oh, okay, cool. I said, I really like, and I just said it to him. I'm like, I really like the other guy the other day. Well, he's not here. And he's just like, all right. Attitude. See you later. Now, he might not care personally, but TK Maxx should be aware of that. Like, yeah. They have staff and employees like that. And yeah. it's weird how that one person can bring a whole company down. down. Yeah. But let's look at this deeper. This guy doesn't know the impact you know what? How he's impacting a business. No. He doesn't care. He. No. This is a job. Mm -hmm. J O B. Just over broke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is where you are right now. Yeah. This is the bare minimum. Yeah. This is ah. Oh, can't wait to finish this shift. I'm bored on the front. Yeah. But he could have thought about that and just like because I'm not dressed like a millionaire. I got ten million, baby. Exactly. I got a ten million property portfolio. Yeah. But I look like average Joe. I don't look like I'm anything. Mm -hmm. I don't have pride and I'm but he's just spoken to that uh, to a multi-millionaire yeah. and I just look in my head and I just think in my head I think a bunch of things I don't want to say it out loud but, <laughs> I'm just, but I'm just like cool bro this is why you are oh, where you, you are, are. Mm -hmm. but then I have to reflect and go why doesn't this child yeah. know yeah. why is he not aware why is he not aware of the energy that he's giving out the negativity and this will be the same person who's going to be going Nothing goes right for me, you know. Yeah, literally. Nothing, uh, world's against for me. Yeah. No opportunity. That's for a rich lot, in it, bruv? It like, is. you'll come up with that rather yeah. than face it. But where's the education? Where's the schooling system? Where's the mentorship? Where's the, okay, there's a whole different chessboard you could be playing on. Yeah. Not PAYE, but self employment, self assessment, SA 302s. Yeah. And it is out there, but we don't know. But here's programs that people provide if you want to go that route. Right. If yeah. you want to be top, there's nothing. No, no, there's and, literally nothing. And you just got to be lucky. So this is where your luck starts, that you're born into a family yeah. who's got a business mm -hmm. or a friend in the family who's got a business and say, actually, it wasn't for me, but that uncle over there knows how to do, do this. this. So go on a little dabble with there. Yeah. Or you're just on social media and you come across something that you think, well, that sounds too good to be true because no one's ever spoke to me about that and it looks like it's fraud it looks like it's not real yeah. or he's talking shit he's <laughs> trying to sell a course yeah. and then you take that leap of faith yes um, yeah so everybody in your family has anyone been an entrepreneur no one so where's that spurred it from you like where's that spur come come from that you want this next thing that you know, you want your own business. You want to be your own you. Obviously, you're yeah. you're, you're you're doing all the groundwork, yes. and you're finding out. Yeah. You're getting experience. You're yeah. networking. Yeah. But ultimately, you want the to be the is, boss. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And you know what? It's almost like you know when you see people that inspire you in your family. It's almost like it's almost like the opposite. So my mom, don't get me wrong, she's like a chartered accountant. She works for a really really big corporate American company. But I see she's like 60, she's 60 this year. And she works from like seven in the morning to like six at night. She'll probably work until she's like 65, 66. She works weekends, she works Saturdays. They seem to like get rid of people and then dish out the jobs to the people that are already left just so they don't have to pay someone else's wage. And they'll just constantly bombard work, work, work. And I've seen she's just chained to her job. And don't get me wrong, she loves it. But without that, she's got nothing. Like, she's got no... She identifies with her job way too much. Do you know what I mean? She's so... She's very, very successful. She's given... She's a single mom. She's given me and my sister, like, everything we've ever could have asked for. So that's probably why, ultimately, she's in the position that she's in. But seeing how a standard sort of... And not even a standard, but even a high level corporate job, you know, you can be on good money, but you ain't got the time to spend it like at all. And seeing everyone in my family, like they've done pretty well. Like, my dad's in sales with his, um, one of his best friends company. But again, like he's got no life really. He does have a life, but to the extent of say someone who owns their own business, owns their own time, I can imagine it's like very, very difficult. You know, you've got a lot of time which is spent within that business, but it's for you, it's for your family, it's for generations to come. And it's just such a more of a, 
impressionable impact on your whole entire family whereas like you're getting a paycheck at the end of that year and it's ain't going up or it's not going down depending on how much work you put in and I think for me I've seen that going in the NHS when I was younger and always being oh how's everyone and it's like living the dream living the dream that typical sort of you know statement that people say and just being in that environment and thinking wow like if I go down this route this is this is what I'm getting this is where I'm going but then when I go to events and I start going to property events and just seeing how happy and how like you know people love to like go out and socialize and have like loads like quite a lot of holidays they might be business trips but you know you've got such a nice network of people and I think the corporate world can be actually a bit lonelier sometimes and I know that's quite a different opinion because a lot of people say entrepreneurship is very lonely and I can imagine it can be but because there's a lot of people with a lot of respect for you and what you're doing I think property you know we're all trying to almost achieve the same thing like happiness contentment and that's our route to get there in a sense but the route of corporate is almost just okay I'm going to be safe this way and in it's an illusion of safety as well isn't it because I know people that have been made redundant out of nowhere and they've their whole life's turned around and they're thinking oh my god I've dedicated like how many years of my life 25 days off a year to now be like jobless Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't really want to take on like 60 late 50s because they ain't got a lot of time Mm -hmm. in them or they could be suffering from health issues Mm -hmm. i think people don't know that word of indispensable no of how to become indispensable yes yes um so i've been in many jobs myself and people turn up for their job and end up they like it when they get paid and then they go, the energy goes down. I'm like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this until they get paid again? Yeah. And then they want to leave this job, but then they have this fear of what if I leave, I can't pay my bills. Yeah. I can't pay my mortgage. Bitch. can't support my yeah. family. And then, like at the, yeah. And they're stuck in this trap. And then sometimes there's the fear of, oh, I better work a little bit harder now for this period because I might get sacked and the fear of losing your job. Yeah. But the way I've always looked at it, Lucy, is, right, for example, I'm working in McDonald's. Yeah. If I'm doing fry station, I see the person doing fries all day long, making these fries, here's your chips. I'm a little bit slow. I burnt a chip bucket. I could get sacked, whatever. (laughs) It could happen. However, whenever I've started, I've started bagging nuggets, putting yeah. nuggets up. And I was like, yeah, can I run this chicken side? And I'm making the fillet fishes and making mm-hmm. the burgers. And mm-hmm. yeah, I'm championing this. And then I was like, well, I've known this side. Can I do a shift on the grill side? And you're learning the burgers. And then I'm like, can I grow up chips? And you're doing chips. And then you finish a, 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 a shift on chips and somebody's not mm-hmm. turned up. And they go, oh, but one person short on grill. And I'm like, oh, I, I know grill it. side. Yeah. You do the grill side. And then you go, can I learn the till? And they're like, no, you, we ain't got enough labour. We can't pay you for yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, okay, cool. So can I work on my break? And they go, yeah, you can work on your break. <laughs> and it's like, all right, cool. So I've got 45 minutes. Um, I'll eat in 15 minutes and, and I'll work for free. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. can I do the tills now? And they were like, yeah, of course you can. You know, go and learn. Yeah, yeah, free yeah. labour for us. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. next minute, the next time is like, oh, finish my chips. And like, oh, Lucy ain't turned up on tills. Oh, I know tills. <laughs> oh, we have to pay this fucking out. Oh, but, but, but we need him right now. Yeah, yeah, so I'm cool. yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm on tills. Yeah, and yeah, next yeah. minute it's like, hey, do you want to be a trainee manager? Yeah, I don't mind. Well, yeah. I can train people on any mm-hmm. of this stuff. Next yeah. minute you get to manager. And that is the terminology of indispensable, indispensable. because you're able to do so many jobs. Mm-hmm. This company now cannot afford to, to let you. you go. Yeah, yeah. But again, I felt that I learned that from my dad That's and the entrepreneurial side yeah. and go, be the best you can and, and and like that it is army training it is it's bloody militant yeah, it's like polish yeah. your boots get your bed yeah, out ready discipline. get out 900 hours and this is yeah, what we're gonna do yeah. and and with no motivation in terms of like um right so dad i've done all of that all right can go home now right can i have a panda pop like one of them little, yeah, little, yeah, little 25 yeah, yeah, drinks yeah, and he's yeah. like there's uh juice at home the dilute one and it's like oh, what? oh and it's God. like you know Right, listen, son, let, let's have this conversation again. Yeah. Um, you live in my house. Yeah. And you live in, and, 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 and you eat my food. food. Yeah. Do you want to be on That's the road? Right. Yeah. And I was like, 
thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'll yeah, just go home yeah, now. Yeah, but like, yeah. that's a different generation. Oh man. my God, a thousand percent. That's, a that's, thousand. That's, we, we, we get it way too easy. <laughs> like we get things handed to us. So let, Not all of us, but. Yeah. So look, you're born between um, 97 and 2012. Yeah. Yeah. So your class is a Gen Z. Yeah. I'm born between 1981 and 1996. Yeah. Um, so I'm a millennial. Yeah. Um, so we're we're cut from two different Dif- cloths here completely now. Different, you know yeah, what I mean? So 100%. um let's talk about these changes because there's a guy out there called um Simon Sinek. Have you heard of him? I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy like has lovely specs and he's very good at speaking and yeah. very good at psychology yeah. and very good at determining different things. And he believes that, you know, um like in a job, have you heard of the gold watch? I haven't, no. Oh, so I not a lot of people have. No. So it's like uh do, do you know about face value? Yeah. Yeah, to a certain degree. Yeah. So face value, just for the just, audience who doesn't understand, face value is you're supposed to do a nine to five, but you still have people in the office after five o'clock who yeah. stay till seven. And your boss goes, you're my oh, star God. employee. Yes. I love you yeah. because you're working for free for yeah. me on 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 your time now. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that person's like, yeah, I'm working hard for my boss. I hope he likes me more. Uh-huh. Um, I hope he notices more. Maybe I might get promoted more. Yeah. And I don't mind. I wasn't going to do anything right. anyway. Yes. But yeah. in this day and age, nobody knows. It's like, Am I getting paid for that? Bye. Yes. Bye. Yeah. My Netflix is waiting for me. Literally. My friends are waiting for me. Yeah. My social media, Instagram is waiting for me. Yeah. <laughs> I've got side hustles. I'm going to be getting paid out for. Yeah. So people are like, you know, they think sort of very differently. Now, the Definitely. gold watch was, right, annual meeting. I'd like to call up Lucy Taylor. You've been an absolutely um, amazing um, employee. Here's a gold watch, you know. So he's accumulated two hours a day, 14 hours a week, 28 hours, 50 hours. That's like a salary in itself. And over a year, he's accumulated 500 hours extra for you, which is a whole salary. Yeah. Yeah, So he saved about 35, 40 grand. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, here's a five grand watch Watch. for you. And you're like... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I got a gold watch, yo. But yeah. in this day and age, you won't even hear about that. No. There's a total different shift. And the thing is, with the millennials, we were thinking more of the old school way. Like, I need to work hard for my boss, need mm-hmm. to climb the ranks, mm-hmm. perseverance, um, you know, got to be loyal to my boss. But there's a very different feel and, 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 and thinking behind this new generation. Like, for example, you've already told me that you had so many jobs and so many job offers and from the age of 16 to 23 now Mm -hmm. seven years you've had a whole list of work already yeah so it feels like you're hopping and jumping already yeah literally what's the thinking behind that you know what when I enter and I and again I really do think it's the access to so much information at a young age and Mm -hmm. I think it's unfortunately it's only ever going to get a bit worse Mm. so like I used to be I think it's, I feel embarrassed saying this, but I was obsessed with the Kardashians when I was about Mm -hmm. 13, 12. And I'd watch them thinking, they're getting paid to just get filmed and to do nothing. And it was that culture of, well, there's other ways to make money. I know there's other ways to make money. And being able to research from the click of a button millions of results of different job titles, things that you'd never even hear about at a school establishment or say when you were at school and like just the access to everything you've got access to now, it just opens your mind up so much to the possibilities of life and what there is out there. Whereas I think before they were very they were very good at keeping that under wraps and saying, you know, if you don't do well in school and you don't get a sort of corporate career, like you are just done for. Whereas now there's so many more other options like Forex. And I know that's really, really difficult. And um, like that whole drop shipping craze and so many different things, which has really been able to be accessed through our phones and through YouTube and all these different things. So people are just thinking like, I only live once. Why am I settling for an office job where there's just miserable people? I'm not really getting paid a lot. And I could be out here, you know, 
influencers literally just posting videos of what you're wearing and where you're eating and they're making thousands and thousands of pounds and they're doing what they love to do and I think it's a whole generation of like almost like I don't want to say it but like a bit, bit entitled so it's a bit like oh well they're not better than me so why can't I do that why am I sitting in a job and say like I did recruitment and I got given the incentive that if I was there for like I don't know, it's like eight years. My salary would go up to like 35k a year. Eight years. And I was like, mm, with what I've seen and what I know people are on and I've met people now and I'm thinking, oh my God, I hate this job already. And now I've got to do X amount of years that'll take me over to 30 when I want to have, be having kids. I mean, 30 grand, that's going to be like worth what? 20 grand in the next 10 years with how inflation and how price price of houses and foods go in and then it all just like set it into me thinking God, I've got to like change this like I've got to do something else and I think that's what a lot of people in my generation have the idea of now and it's more bottom line the access to information is what just about, crazy what about getting your stars and your experience what about in terms of I need to learn my yeah. bread and butter. Yeah, definitely. How do I turn up nine o'clock every day? Yeah. How do I reach my assignments and create that discipline? How yeah. do I uh, do my tasks? How do I complete my tasks? How mm. do I get over to the other side? How do I become this thing before I transfer want... it to somebody else? Yes. And rather than become half a thing, because sometimes... You're winging Jumping it. Jumping it. Yeah, 100%. There's so many people winging it. Yeah. Oh, I'm a something expert. <laughs> <And> it's like, <laughs> are not. you? Yes. What does that mean? Well, I've done one little course. Uh, yeah, literally. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Right? And now 100%. you know how to do it. And then you you produce this. But well, oh, you didn't like it. What didn't you like about it? Okay. Would you like me to do that again for you then? Shall I improve them points and then go back and come back? But that's what you said. Yeah. That's what you want it to look like. And it's yeah. like, not literally where's your intuition where's your yeah. like you can't build that into somebody no. that's that is done with hard grit well, and experience 100%. and there's a lot of the new generation like Stephen Bartlett yeah says yeah. himself that the Gen Z's are lazy I've got to say like I I do agree I actually do agree and luckily in my I think it was the NHS that made me the way I am. Mm -hmm. I'd be getting up and I'd be getting to work for six in the morning and I'd be working sometimes from like, sometimes I'd do 15 hour shifts from like the age of like 16 to like now really. I'd do like 15 hour shifts in the A&E, then I'd go to the gym. I did a business degree. So I got a first class in my business degree. So I think all the things that you were saying, like discipline, you know, getting you know, being very strict on time, being um, being able to work multiple things at, at the same time. So like going to uni, getting assignments done on time and never handed an assignment in late. And yet I was working at the a and &E. I was doing different jobs. I think I was lucky to get that experience like before. So all my like personal attributes are very set in now because of how early I started whereas I know people some people don't really get that opportunity and they just do jump into it and they're like well I want this now but you can't even get to the gym for like six like you're getting up at the weekends at like 12 and but then that just it's your fault like you have to like take responsibility and I think it all changed for me when I did get that job and like I had no choice, like I had to be there for six. I had to travel to Stoke. So I'd get like the shuttle bus. So I'd go to my my um my hospital to then go to that hospital. So I'd be up at like four in the morning sometimes, getting to work and while all the other people were like still in bed and stuff like that. And so I think being able to have the opportunity to do that at such a young age has given me so many years of experience and it's natural to me now so I'll get to the gym, gym early every morning I'll get my work done I'll have like I'll try and have a strict sort of routine of what I sit of what, of what I set myself and stick to even at the weekends so I try not to think oh weekends I can just do whatever I want I can get up at 12 one o'clock I really try and keep that routine very strict 
And I think that's almost why I've got where I've got to. And obviously when I've spoken to Reggie and I've gone to like Savoy's events and I've really shown that, that people see value in me and people realize that I'm not just talk. I do act and have acted for years what I wanted almost subconsciously like I've like driven myself in the right way without even realizing it's just almost like a an automatic thing that I've just got used to where does that come from I think it's my mum my mum is like god she like studied for so long with her job because she had to do course after course accountancy chart she's like the best qualified accountant that you can get so the amount of courses, she was like looking after two kids. She was doing all these different things. And I think her multitasking was just outstanding. So I think even not remembering when I was younger, but seeing that has like gone into my subconscious. So I can't really remember, remember, if you ask me, what was it like when you were like six? How was your mom? But I've seen that and I know I've seen it. And I think I must have just absorbed it and through genetics and stuff, and just seeing people so, like, depressed in their jobs and just looking at it and thinking, that is not going to be me. Mm -hmm. That is not going to be me. So it's, like, turned on its face. You've got people that are looking at people that are so happy, going on holidays, doing this, and they're like, oh, my God, I want to be like that. But then me looking at people like, oh, Monday again, I've got a week of this, and looking at them going, and I think that was almost better motivation for me to look at that and think god I've only got one life here I'm in the A&E I'm seeing how quickly life can be over I'm not going to spend my life thinking oh it's Monday again mm -hmm. you also said earlier on your family unit you come from a single parent background yeah is that correct yes how do you feel that shaped and 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 influenced you in your life? Because a lot of people go off the rails when they, they go, do. there's no yes. male mm -hmm. sort of yeah. dominant figure who's 100%. running the ship, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So my dominant male figure was my granddad. So like he almost took the place of my dad. And he was a very, very successful man. Mm -hmm. He lived in QA. He lived in South Africa. He was like the top of his game in his industry. He could have opened his own business. My nan always moans at him for about that because um, he had the knowledge, he had the drive, he had the discipline. Like he was unstoppable. Like he was incredible. Like I took so much motivation from him. I remember in year six, I never was never good at maths, but he sat me down every single day for six months without fail. Like you might think, oh, one day off, not an, any day off and made me recite my times tables every single day without fail. I can do them without any like bother now, literally without any bother. So almost that was like teaching me discipline from such a young age to be like, if you want something really bad, you sit yourself down. Even if you want to go out with your friends and play out, no, you sit yourself down, you focus and you will get it. Even how hard it was for me, I kept getting it wrong, kept getting it wrong. But even now, like, however many years later I can still recite them like it like I was like when I was like what nine or ten so he was massive massive influence in my life and I think from seeing my mum and seeing how she was going she was relying on my dad for the income my dad was a very old-fashioned women stay at home look after the kids but he was sort of away having an affair so it was almost making my mum have no choice but to stay with him even though she knew what he was doing so I think from a young age my mum's always said to me be just individual don't be reliant on anyone like it's really hard and even when I go to work and I hear the stories that some people have gone through with their husbands and wives and stuff and how much you don't actually really know someone that you think you know everything about someone can really change on you so quickly no matter how many years of marriage you've got so I think seeing all of that I thought okay like I'm not off marriage or anything I've you know obviously I want to find someone but I want them to like add to what I've got but if they were to go I won't be thinking oh my god I'm gonna do my house I've got no how am I gonna feed my kids if this happens or that happens so I think it's and like you said, some people do go off the rails. But I think having my granddad, as well as the influence from my nan and my mom, being like, just make yourself in indestructible. 
and make yourself so independent that like, yeah, you've got a load of room for like love and affection and you are like a, a feminine person, but you can survive on your own and you don't need anyone to pay your bills and pay your water and pay your food. And, and I think I have comfort knowing that and knowing that I've always got that sort of safety net to know that obviously when you work together, then you've got even like more money and you've got more success. And that is great. But when, if that was to break apart, you've still got both of, you know, he's still got his and I've still got mine. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean, but I'm going to play like devil's advocate okay, here. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, my next question was going to be more like, how do you see a relationship? Yeah. Because that sort of sounds too textbook. It sort of sounds yeah, yeah. like... Um, he's this jigsaw piece, I'm that jigsaw piece, we're meeting together, but we can release each other and we're still each other. It's, jigsaw yeah. piece is like, we'll still survive and we'll jigsaw into something else. <laughs> yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, where's that element of trust? Yeah, yeah. Where does that trust come into that? Yeah. I'll fall and he'll catch me. Because yeah. in a certain way, in a certain different world, somebody could say that's a very negative way yeah. to look at a relationship yeah, no, to say, that. I have to be very strong. I have to be very astute. <laughs> I have to earn this money. I have to build this. Yeah. That. It's great to have all these skills. Yeah. Um, and I would advise my sisters, daughters, everything to do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with you there. Yeah, yeah. But where's that element of, I know these qualities look in a man mm -hmm. and that element I'm going to let go and he'll catch me when I fall. And that's like true love. True like, love, yeah. Like you're really going to sort of look into that sort of side. Because where's that element of that guy goes, well, she could leave me at any time. Yeah. She doesn't have like a, a guy likes a woman depending on him. Because yeah. he, cause he's a provider. Yeah. He's going out to hunt, yeah. bring the food. This is what makes a man a man. Makes yeah. him feel like, yeah, I've got this. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. providing for you. Like, you know, yeah. even if, if he doesn't want the respect, like, you know, thank you, babe. You do this for me. He might not want that. He just wants, I appreciate, I appreciate you. you. And he's like, I have, uh, what do you call it? Like, when a man comes home and feels that he's valued yeah. in a yeah. certain way. And when he doesn't have that, he's like, he, he's losing something. And then he'll, he might even get told off by you for doing <laughs> something wrong. And then he's going to his work and yeah. then he's being told off by his yeah. boss. Yeah. And go, you never done that right. All of a sudden, this man is not becoming a man anymore and okay, mental yeah. health's hitting him. And mm -hmm. he doesn't even know why. Yeah. But the human brain and instinct is built that way. Yeah. And the way you're describing a relationship, Lucy, is like, again you're taking that power away mm -hmm. yeah maybe you even know yes. you're taking that power and you're yeah, like hey yeah. don't yeah, fuck yeah, with yeah. me yeah because <laughs> you're fucking with the wrong bad bitch here yeah because i'll take to the cleaners <laughs> so where, where do you meet that ground like how's yeah. your opinion on relationships there and 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 how do you go about that because yeah. let's hear it from the woman point of view yeah it is no it's a tricky one because i think obviously for so many like years that has been the case like with my nan my mom like probably way generations way before that it's almost in our blood to be like that so this whole new generation of I'm gonna go out and provide for myself is still a very new thing for everyone to get used to in a sense but speaking to someone yesterday so like she's a finance manager and her husband I think they make the same amount of money but they still they've been together for like 40 years and she said something really interesting to me she said I've got my own life. I'll go out with my friends. I'll do whatever. But the trust is like that. Like they adore each other so much. So like he goes out and does whatever he wants. She goes out and does whatever she wants. They come together and they're like, they're so strong. And I think it's hard to compare relationships because everyone is so psychologically different. They want different things. They want to be different people. But obviously them two have just really felt lucky and they like the way each other are. And they're happy with having that distance and that time apart to then come back and not always be on each other's cases and be under each other's feet and that's worked for them but that might not work for other people and I think I think it's too it's too conditioned into me to ever be in the state that say even my nan was in so like I love my granddad but sometimes he wasn't the best 
man. And I think maybe in today's day and age, they might not have stayed together. But back then, it was just like work on whatever happened. If it went bad, just, you know, try and make it work. And I mean, she couldn't really survive without him anyway, because he was the The complete breadwinner. breadwinner. And she had nowhere to go. There's loads of services now, isn't there, for like loads of women. So there's a lot more option now. Whereas back when my and granddad were younger, it was just like, stick together, just stick together. But then it's interesting because it's almost gone the opposite way. So it's like, even if you have a a few fallouts, it's like we're getting divorced. And there's not as much sticking together and trying to get through things anymore, which I think it's, it's gone tiny bit the opposite way. But going back to your question, I've seen, and even like, so like yesterday I spoke to a nurse and his mom was blind. And his mom and dad had been together for like, years he's an accountant they were from Ireland and they realized during the end she actually had cancer and it was terminal so she was passing away and they found out that for 10 years he was having an affair with a Russian lady and was taking money out of she had a business she he stole nearly a million pounds off her but he was doing her accounts and obviously she was blind and she was literally like, he'd never ever do that to me. He loves me. We're going to, you know, we've been together for so long. I'd never happen. And obviously when it did happen, it was like, like a massive bomb had exploded. And hearing stories like that, just really like, it always scares me a little bit. And it scares me to thinking, God, like they were together because she hadn't always been blind. So they got together before and they were just like young sweethearts. They loved each other so much. But knowing that someone that is supposedly meant to love you steal that much amount of money, they got it all back in the end because they went to court and whatever. And obviously he was found guilty. But hearing little stories like that throughout my life and seeing them things happen, I just, I don't think I could ever let myself get to a point where I am lost without someone else. You know, that whole theory about finding happiness and contentment within yourself and not getting too attached to somebody. And I've known people go into like severe depression if their husband leaves, like that's their life done. Like, they're like, what? I met a lady on reception and her mum was like 40 when her dad left. Ever since, she's never been with anyone else. She's been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and her life's just done because her whole happiness, her whole everything was in him. It was nothing was in mm. himself, within herself. That sounds like an Asian household. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's left me, never going to move well, on, you know. Literally. My life is done and it's just like, you know. Um, but then I can also say from that experience, seeing that from the inwards, that was also real, real true love. It was like, oh, nothing's going to break, break us. us. Yeah. You know, even, for example, even if you cheated on me, I'd fucking forgive you. You <laughs> fucker. Like, you know, I dare you do that. Yeah, but I know yeah. she was just a piece of me yeah. that you just wanted a little bit of, yeah. but still put up with you and I get mm-hmm. over it. Like, mm-hmm. it's that kind of true, true, true. True love. We're going to do, like, do or die. Yeah. But that's, kind of not there it's like you make one mistake asshole you're gone and i'm gone yeah, you know? yeah. like this generational shift it's do you crazy. think that's good i think it's 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 good in some ways but it's it's not good in other ways so like say like take cheating i think a one night stand compared to like a whole ass you know affair they're two completely different things aren't they you Could can't you really forgive compare. somebody who had a one night stand I have. <laughs> I've forgiven someone who's... I already wow. have. So it's... Um, I can't be the person... Did you get over it? I didn't, no. I'm not even no. going to lie. No, I didn't. And I think the the distance was quite difficult as well. But it was... Yeah. I, it's happened to me a few times as well. Wow, what people have cheated on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And wow. I think in this generation, like, it's so easy. Like... Is the Tinder, Hinge, um, even Instagram, just going on to someone's account and liking a few of their old photos and bam, you've got someone in your in your direct messages wow. like straight away. And it's, um, yeah, the whole culture of cheating is almost accelerated to a How whole new level. How are people level. approaching you now? It is. It is you're a pretty girl. Is, you've got some nice <laughs> pictures on your Instagram. You're out there. How yeah. many messages do you get a day of guys I mean, going, yo, wagwan, baby girl? Yeah. 
Yeah, my you wife told wine and dine it's you on that. The, it's <laughs> the like in the stories now. It's oh. the like in the stories. Stories. Yeah, post yeah. Post stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post stories, liking stories. And uh, yeah, just like messaging on, on Instagram. You'll rarely get people, say like in London, like a few people like in the tube station or something. Very like, it takes you by surprise because a lot of people in our generation they do not have the confidence to go yes. up to someone confidence that's a big one they like, don't because um they're so into their phones yeah and so used to talking to a phone that talking to a human being is like what it's like, what's it's that a whole yeah literally. what's that mother yeah so yeah. like so a girl like you yeah, yeah if a guy was walking down the tube or, or down the street and said, excuse me, darling, have you got the time? And you were like, oh yeah, of course I have. It's half past three. And it's like, thank you. Um, like, you know, I just wanted to say you've got really beautiful eyes. I, I just, I mean, to be honest, how would I'm, you take that I would, as a new I'd, generation? I'd always obviously, you know, say thank you. And you know what? Sometimes like I'd feel a little bit awkward. Like, Oh my God, someone's, actually yeah. saying this to my face and like then, it's really out of the blue and like yeah. takes you by surprise yeah so it's taking you by surprise and then he goes look um i know it's quite random but i'd love to like take you out for a meal or yeah. go and do something fun would could we expect exchange numbers how would you feel about that you're single yeah you're, you know you're, what you're it would be a case of i know this is quite shallow isn't it but obviously i'm very tall and if I, I could never just say, sorry, I'm not really like into you. I'm just going to sort of leave that there. I couldn't. So I'd always go to the, sorry, I've got a boyfriend. <laughs> you knew I was going to say that, <laughs> didn't you? I'd be like, oh, so sorry. I've got a boyfriend, but you know, thank you so much. So, so, so you're five foot 11, five yeah, foot 10, yeah. 11. So somebody would have to be at least your height. I mean, maybe that is because of subconsciously the bullying that happened when I was younger and I'm still... I, I get surprised that shorter boys would even want to go for me. Do you know what I mean? Because of that that difference. And I guess, I don't want to sound shallow, but I think it might be because of the way I grew up and the, the sort of response I had to that. So I even sometimes still be like, oh God, I wish I was shorter. Like it just made life a bit easier with wow. clothes, with wow. different things. And sometimes when you don't want to stand out and there's just always people looking at you like, wow, how tall are you? How tall are you? I just feel like walking around with a little badge on like, yes, I'm 5'11 before you ask. Because I get asked every single time oh. I go somewhere. And um, it almost makes you feel like sometimes people have got a good response, but sometimes it makes you feel like a bit of a like a weirdo like obviously you don't see many girls like my height so I guess it's like a bit of a shock factor and obviously like Asian people like I went to um Gretna Green in Scotland for my dad's wedding and I was wearing heels and I actually got about 10 people asking for a photo with me oh, because wow. I was so tall wow. um so like yeah little things like that <laughs> Hello, you like photo? <laughs> Let's take oh, like picture. a celebrity. <laughs> I was there standing there thinking this is so Do you know so what? Odd. If you did that, your eyes and eyebrows, like you look like a younger Katie Price. Actually. Oh, I mean, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. But no, I mean, I think I think in regards to that, it's, um, I'm again, I'm way too nice sometimes. Yep. And uh, I'd always take it as a compliment. I'd always be nice about it. And sometimes I even would take the number just because I feel bad right. and then and then you text, ghost them after and then I just wouldn't reply wow <laughs> that's really horrible wow. isn't it so you couldn't date somebody shorter I don't think I could no, no. I don't think even I could. if it was really nice oh I see oh you're putting me in an awkward position because like no be honest I know I know because like, I just don't want to sound shallow but no you got to say what you got to say I just I think because of how I feel about it maybe if my opinions on myself would change and like my height and whatever yeah. it would possibly There's be nothing, an option the not amount of confidence in him the the heart of him the the rolls royce coming up <laughs> no, 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 no. no 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 i saw no, something like rolls royce i knew, I knew what? you were gonna say Is it that the spectra no not even <laughs> <laughs> you know what not even the money you know not no, even the money like no. i could just i don't think i could like i really couldn't and i think i just i want to feel feminine Mm -hmm. And you know, when I'm walking next what? to someone and they are like a lot short, like heels, I love wearing heels, oh, boy. Yeah. but like, it so seems like, it's more important like... than a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh no I just gonna maybe this is why I've fallen on the voice that I've fallen because oh, I'm not yeah. going maybe for the right things do you know what I mean but and even with like my networking and what I do like and I don't know your opinion on this but some men are a little bit like inherently like sort of jealous sometimes so when I'm going to a networking event and I'm around a lot of men it doesn't really bode very well sometimes okay. with people that say I'm either with or talking to, which I do understand. But then that's where that element of trust comes in. Mm -hmm. And if then that's not there, it makes everything 10 times as hard. And I don't want to sacrifice what I'm doing mm -hmm. for something that might not even last a long time. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I need someone to sort of fit that sort of path in a way and you know when you're younger and you just think oh yeah they're, they're fit they're, they're this they're that all aesthetics nothing really what you wanted to do with your life where's your future going and what's going on up here it never used to be even in the question when you were younger mm -hmm. but now it's like the front of everything and it's always like well if you want to stay here and I'm going here there and it's just not gonna mm. it's not gonna gel and even seeing some people in relationships as much as it's great and you know you're having a great time and even if they're perfect you know in every single way you're so happy and smitten with them that all you want to do is spend time with them so even in a positive way it holds you back in a sense so if you've got an opportunity to go to like Dubai or something and they couldn't come with you, nine times out of ten, you won't be going. Mm. But then when you're on your own and you've got your own <clears throat> sort of vibe, you don't have anyone making any sort of influences on that, you're like a free bird and you can go wherever. Okay, so you go that route, you don't want to get too attached to somebody because they I might the hold you back. <laughs> and then you're 50-year-old yeah. Lucy now. <laughs> I knew you yeah, say that. You've got a high-flying career, yeah. you're in Dubai, you've got this lovely double-breasted suit, high heels are still there. You're looking good, you can afford all the lotions and potions and treatments, mm -hmm. you're looking amazing but you're past your sell by date. Yeah. Yeah. And what I and mean by that is you've like probably hit menopause into your 50s, yeah. something very natural that happens. Um, and a guy walks up and he sees you and he sees another woman. And this woman is now a housewife yeah. or a homemaker, should we call it? Yeah. She's got children and grandchildren and if you put them both in a room, Lucy's there by herself. Yeah. And we walk into the other room and there might be about, for example, just like maybe not 50, maybe yeah. 60. Yeah? yeah. 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 But you might say 30 people in this room. Yeah. And you look at that woman who's had them children, who's had five children each, mm -hmm. who's had grandchildren. And that one woman has created all of that. Like yeah. Entrepreneurs, you know, business people, yeah. people who are working, helping, giving back doctors, nurses, yeah. you know. Who are you respecting more? This one woman who's got a, a career, got a bit of money. Even women themselves go, I, I just want to settle down. I want to spend this yeah. with somebody. And, yeah, 100%. And, 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 and that's all. So where do you find that balance. balance? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. And I think it is, I think it's through finding someone that has, that motivates you and find them same sort of, not so much goals aligned, but they're they're happy for you to just pursue your career and for you to be happy and find yourself within what you want to do and your passions. So you sound pretty alpha. Would you say? Yeah, because you're in it's... front. And yeah, you're like, you need somebody yeah. who supports you, who pushes you. Who... So are you looking for a masculine man? <laughs> like you're a five foot, yeah. uh, 11, 10 girl. Yeah. You're looking for a guy who's as yeah. tall as you. Mm -hmm. And then you want him to... Not be a pussy. <laughs> no. <laughs> but just be no, like, not come even. on, Lucy, I'm your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> you can do this. You can do it. No, Nobody right. can. Go on, Lucy. <laughs> you know, you like, know like, well, where's that balance? Because he's going to be tall. He's probably going to have a deep voice. He's going to yeah. be like, I want to yeah. do this. Where are you off to? Yeah. Going to meet you there after work. Oh, yeah. You're going to buy. No way. Uh, we're <laughs> over. It's done now. You ain't getting all of this. Like, where's that balance? It's, yeah, it's it's hard. And I can imagine throughout my life and when I'm on my journey, it's, it's going to be a a little bit difficult but I think if you find someone that 
like apart from the money and the business and whatever and just like appreciates who you are on a sort of deeper level of just like all like seeing the weird side of you and just seeing that side of you that no one else sees what's the weird side you don't want to know anyone <laughs> watching this now my friends are going to be like oh Comment my in. god yeah, yeah no honestly it, i can be really really weird sometimes yeah, but i think on, tell us one go on Oh, I don't even know. Just like What's your party little trick? random things. You what? Sorry. <laughs> What's like your party trick? Come on, there oh, must be something random. You know what? Random. It's just it's just when like I've had a drink, especially when oh. I've had a drink, and even when I haven't, hmm. and I'm in a really like sort of hyper mood. I I've got this thing, especially if I'm in a club, and I just won't. I'll just completely be in the mindset of oh my God, I'm not going to be here one day and no one around me is probably ever going to see me again. Mm. I'm just going to dance like an absolute idiot and just make all my friends laugh oh, and wow. and they're all videoing me and I'm oh, normally wow. like the only one dancing and and just not being that sort of just sitting there for the yeah. Instagram pictures and yeah, <laughs> and like taking all the selfies and stuff. I'm not really that girl. Oh, wow. I'd rather just sort of have a good time, have a laugh. Like I love laughing. Like it's the best medicine ever, mm -hmm. ever isn't it? Like just being able to laugh until like you, you're not making a noise do you know what I mean like your stomach is killing yeah. you it's just great and I love them feelings and being around them people that bring that out of you is like really really important so like I wouldn't say having like a feminine man because that is a bit like off-putting in a sense like I don't want someone who is sort of like you said just sort of not really got much motivation to do much for themselves but almost like living through you but just having like good careers, both of you, and being able to come home at the end of the day and just be yourselves together and almost like switch off from the sort of work mode into just sort of like your natural, normal state. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But still having that motivation to be like, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. And having that like togetherness and just sort of, just support and and love and I have seen it like my next door neighbors like they've both got really 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 good jobs they've been together for like 50 years and they like adore each other and they've moved he's moved for her she's moved for him and they've been lucky to know that their jobs that they've been doing are flexible and they're mm -hmm. they were they both work for like international companies so wherever they've gone they've always found an office so they've felt lucky really <clears throat> but they've always just motivated each other and they you can just tell how much love they have for each other mm -hmm. and how probably they've had difficult times but they've always stuck together they've always stuck it out mm -hmm. and they both now are financially really really good they're going on holidays all the time. They're cutting their hours down at work. And now they're just giving themselves time for themselves. And I know it's like a, a fairy tale sort of ending in a sense. And I know it's idealistic sometimes to think it's going to go that perfectly because it probably won't. But like you said, it's it's learning to have that balance. But to learn, you need to go through the wrong things and you know make mistakes to think, oh, okay, maybe I need to be a little bit more like this or maybe go for a guy a little bit more like this to not go through the same pattern again and again and mm. again and narrowing it down each sort of <clears throat> time in a sense not that I want to go through you know numerous relationships <laughs> but exactly <laughs> but um yeah just being like careful in a sense and even the face value thing that you said now a lot of people have different opinions what how how long do you think you should be speaking to someone before taking it into a full-blown, we're in a relationship, you're mine, I'm yours. How 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 long do you think that should be? Because <laughs> you know everyone's got very different it opinions could, on that. It, it could be, the thing is, yeah, you could be with somebody for three months and you still don't know if you're seeing each other. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Are we still seeing each other? Is this is exclusive? This, yeah, yeah. Um, she hasn't asked me out properly. I haven't asked her out properly. Yeah. Are we just going to go on a date? Are yeah. we seeing each other? Does that still mean you're seeing other people? Mm -hmm. Like. I think, I think it's all about communication mm -hmm. and you got to talk to each other but nobody wants to make the move because they go I don't want to be like what <laughs> what do you mean you know? girlfriend boyfriend <laughs> literally we went for our date bruv like what's going on bruv do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. like you are you done bruv like, yeah, you know, I'm going like, oh, I fucking blew that one <laughs> yeah. oh it's too hot yeah. but I think really people like I think even that you got to take 
if you're having that sort of conversation, then I yeah. think that reveals people very quickly as well. Yeah. And if Intentions. you say to somebody, you know, I think I really like you. And I don't want I don't want you to think I'm all over you. Like I'm gonna give you a space, your time, your life, but I do really like you. Do you see this going anywhere? anywhere. Or yeah. you know, and that and if it's the right person, yeah, it's gonna say, Do you know what? I really like you as well. And I think you're really nice. And uh, I do potentially see this. Or I'm not really sure because I've been through a couple of bad experiences. Mm -hmm. I've been here before, so I just need a little bit more time. And you can just feed it out. But yeah. somebody goes, I'm a bit scared now. I'm running. It wasn't really right for you in the anyway, first place. So yeah. I think you should be like, do you know when you said earlier on that you like laughing until it makes no noise and you just want to be yourself? Uh, yeah. That's the real person who's around you. When I mean, you can do yeah. that and, he, and he's still looking at you like... That's my chick. Man. Like, yeah. That, that, that's who I want to be yeah. banging behind closed doors Definitely. with. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think you've got to feel it and you've got to have that intuition. Your gut tells you most of the time. 100%. And sometimes you even know in your gut that you're trying to hold on to something that's not really there. No. And you're going, this is too good to be true. I feel like it. They're probably going to feel it, smell it, and they're probably going to say, this is not attractive anymore. Uh, because yeah. I feel that you do need that little push and pull between a partner. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when you, when you get a little bit more comfortable, you go, look, we've got each other and we take it to our next route but I think every single situation is different yeah. I've seen people together for four years she's broken up and got engaged the next month with somebody else and That's actually crazy. got married and had kids yeah like some women are very intelligent oh yeah yeah women yeah. know what they want yeah and yeah. when they don't get it there's a delete boom move on and you're cold you don't mean anything anymore you even if you're like oh we were sharing a bed last month but well, don't Not touch anymore. me end of yeah. cut off like women yeah. if you ever want to see how to boy somebody just watch a woman <laughs> uh, especially in school as well you the school children the girls yeah. were just like you like the other day i saw this thing on the phone and it was just like um this guy trying to act big to this girl's best friend yeah and <clears> you know what she done she goes you think you're a big shot check this out boom 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 yeah and that was a best friend and she goes that doesn't like look like you in the bed, does it? And, and he was like, "What the?" And he goes, "Yeah, that was last night. She was fucking with Tom over there, you know." And it was just like, and then her, and her best friend was just looking at her and going, "Hi, fire, bitch!" Like you know, <laughs> anyway. we got him. Like, and she was just like, "Oh well." Some people are brutal in the trash, honestly. Man, done, and it's like, fucking hell, women Some, are fucking brutal. They are. They you are. Know? Hundred percent. Um, but they're not all like that, and you can't tarnish that brush with no. everybody. But no, not at all. you know, so it goes both ways. You know, women goes, men are like this, but they just they, nine times out of ten they're going for the wrong man. Yeah. You know. Yeah, um yeah. And unfortunately, it is the the good looking guys who've got more confidence, who's a bad man, who's looking at you like this, that you can something alpha and attractive about this uh, yeah, guy. But yeah. he's gonna fuck you over. <laughs> and then and then and then. And then, yeah, she's been around the whole world, comes to 35, and then she goes, yeah, that quiet one in school, he was Ooh, actually the right, the, the right one to yeah. go for. And then they come knocking on the door, <laughs> like, sorry, sorry, like, you know, it, yeah, it, it does yeah, happen yeah. that way. No, so women fun. have got a real line to say, look, we look way ahead in the future. We want someone who's successful. Look at the right attributes. Don't look at what you want right now. Look at what you want in the future and yeah. then try and mold that and say, look, some women, like I had a girl the other day, she'll kill me if she's watching this year, but she goes, um, yeah, Sean, I'm single. But I, I said, what, what is it you want from a guy? Like, let, let's get down to it because yeah. let me try to help you out here. Yeah, what is yeah. it you want from a guy? And she goes, well, he has to be well-dressed. And I was like, okay. And she goes, yeah, he has to have like, a bit like uh, Kanye, like a little bit baggy, but not so baggy. And uh, one of them big shirts uh, yeah. that looks kind of cool and trendy. I was like, so that defines if he's right or not. She goes, yeah, it really does. I was like, why? And she goes, because I come from a fashion background uh, and yeah. then fashion matters a lot. Uh, yeah. I said, but you could take him to fucking Nike or wherever you're going to go, Timberland, and put that on him and he fits that so, and he's got the right attribute. She goes, no, I'm not here to change or fix anybody. And I'm like, but you're not fixing him. <laughs> you're just changing an outfit. Yeah, like, yeah, and that yeah, yeah. defines if that's going to be the father of your children. That's yeah. going to be bringing your, 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 you know, your survival of your next generation. Yeah. And it's this piece of clothes. And I yeah. just found that really materialistic. Yeah. And this person couldn't understand the fact that, no, I think you're attacking me now. I don't think that's right. And I was yeah. like, not attacking you. Just my thought and belief. I think you're a lovely person. Yeah. But that point on why you're in your nearly mid-30s and you're not meeting the one, uh, I think you need to realign your thinking. Again. But she couldn't understand that. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I sort of, I do agree with you with the whole, 
even if you find someone that doesn't exactly say like clothes are such a changeable sort of thing and I think everyone goes through different time periods of their life where they want to wear different things anyway regardless of meeting someone new and I think if you love someone that much and you want to be with someone that much I think that's almost like it's not really something that you think oh well I'm not going to do that and I'm not going to like change myself for you but it's like a case of like wanting to impress them and thinking, oh, okay, so if she likes this sort of, like, outfit, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll try it out, see because if it suits it me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See if it suits me and stuff. And then if it does, then great. And then you've got both, like, two in one. But the people that actually wear them sort of things are probably, like you said, the ones that are going to do you over in the long run. And well, it's the shallow. whole... with Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with, is, with girls, I've got to say, like, sometimes it's, like, the hard to get. You want them more. What you what you have you don't want, and what you can't have you want. Mm-hmm. It's that like backward psychology of like that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna prove to myself that I can get him, mm-hmm. and I can like sort of like pin him down, and like he can be mine, and I can tame him. And it's like a challenge in a sense to think, oh, like you know, I, I think I can do this, and then you realize you've just wasted like x amount of years doing something and trying to change someone in your eyes for the better for like no reason and they were never ever going to go down the route that you wanted them to go down (laughs) it's funny you say that lucy because um there's this guy who does this dating thing on tiktok and he goes you should never let a woman leave the conversation from where she's left it Mm -hmm. you always leave it so for example it's like this year yeah so uh just just tell me just say bye to me after sort of networking event or something okay nice to meet you sean yeah really nice to meet you um by the way sorry sorry before you go i just wanted to really really tell you this one thing um so i was doing this project uh the other day and uh Sorry, I've just seen the time, actually. Do you know what I'm going to tell you next time? So, um, really nice to meet you, Lucy. Uh, okay. I've got to go. See you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, see. Okay. And that psychology is like, what? He just walked away. Do he I? cut me off and off, he stopped. yeah. Like, so, even when a girl's ready to leave, you'd never let her leave because she's like, I left that situation. She likes I'm that, in that, that, that control form. in a sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, no, no, you never let her. Say, come back one second. This, this, this. Oh, I've got to shoot off. See you later. I've got to go. Boom. As if. And the girl's going, not- ah, what? Like, yeah, and yeah. That will be playing rent free in your mind. <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> yeah, especially well if you like really <clears throat> sort of like got them vibes off someone. And I'm really like you said about energies like earlier when mm-hmm. I came, and I'm like I think everyone, even if you're like oh energy, I'm you know some people hear that word mm-hmm. and they're like um, they get all funny about it. But I think everyone inherently feels certain things and gels with certain people more Mm -hmm. than other people and I think when you get that instant sort of like oh my god like Mm -hmm. I can feel even though I've not spoken to them for a long time you feel something with them Mm -hmm. and you're like oh no I think I could see myself talking to them again or Mm -hmm. seeing them in another setting and when you do see them in another Mm -hmm. setting maybe making the first move see like some girls are really really like adamant that they'd never make the first move Mm -hmm. Would you? I would like you 100% would. yeah well, I would. Well, how would you make the first move um so obviously you know either like I've got to say it like social media or even in person yeah cool. and I'd go up to them and I mean in a club setting it would be more of like the eyes and like sort of like smiling at them and then like making a point to like almost like not be around them but like be close to them for like an invitation to be like look I find you attractive or just simply like going up to them and being like I think you're really really attractive or like you're really really good looking like yeah I've 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 like I've I've, I mean I've done that only like really like very few times have you ever been rejected um I don't actually I know I just can sound really big-headed but I don't actually think I have no, I haven't. How do you think that would affect you? I think... If you, if you go, on, go on, say something to me, like, just imagine you're really <laughs> attracted. Okay, into... okay. Um, you're right, Sean. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good, been, I've been um, having a little look uh, at your Instagram recently okay. and I just right. quite like some of the... Um... <laughs> <laughs> some of the some of the recent instas you're posting you're oh, okay, looking cool. uh you're looking really good oh thank you very much i do try yeah well um i just wanted to see if you were if, if you were talking to anyone if you were single or um no i'm not really talking to to that many people i'm just quite okay. focused at work at the moment okay. yeah, lovely yeah, lovely yeah. okay um, well um 
I mean, I've obviously come over to you, so yeah. I um, obviously find you attractive. So really? What about oh, giving wow. me a number or something? Oh yeah, um, about that. Yeah, um, you look you look really good and everything. And like, listen, look, honestly, in another world, like, I'll, you know, the whole room probably wants you right now. Yeah, but um, unfortunately, like, I'm just uh, too focused on other things right now. Okay, uh, but thank you very much. Yeah, that's absolutely. Uh, I know. Yeah. I appreciate your honesty. Yeah, cool. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, well, I wish red, you all the, the best. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to be in a role play, to be honest. So um, how would that no, make you feel? Like the, the, the fear, like do, does fear of rejection, does that go through your veins? I think the times that I've ever done that, I have, I mean, the last time I did that, I was probably about 19. Mm. Um, and I've always had a bit of Dutch courage to give me the confidence to do that. So I think I go up with the intention of, it's literally been like twice so like the last time like I said 19 I think I was in like my hometown and it was a case of well I'm this like I'm fine now and even if it doesn't happen I'm still going to be fine after and I'm just like going to brush it off but like I said it's luckily it's like it didn't happen like obviously back then and I guess now I don't really go out looking for it mm -hmm. and I did have something for quite a long period of time where I was like sort of with someone. So I wasn't really sort of going out there and even like entertaining anything or making any eyes at anyone or anything. So it didn't really like come to me because I think guys are really, I think guys are really good at knowing when the girls sort of interested or matching that energy. I think they can read signs quite well in the respect of if you're just like head down, you're not looking at anyone, you're on your phone or you're dancing with your girls or, you know what I mean? Like you've got no sort of awareness of anyone else around you. The nine times out of 10, you will not get someone coming up to you. Maybe that's a challenge for a guy. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I think nine times out of 10, they do like that little bit of indication mm -hmm. to an extent of, oh, okay, I think they do. They must sort of like me in a sense. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, like everyone's on their phones. No one's got the confidence to go up to someone yeah. nowadays. So on this topic, let's talk a little bit about interpersonal skills and communication skills. Yeah. Um, you seem, mm -hmm. yeah, very aware. Yeah. yeah you, you know your surroundings. Yes, you, you, I am. You got that little old school feel about you. Yes. I, I can feel that energy. Yeah. You've been raised by your granddad. Yeah. You know, you've done a lot of jobs. You've worked with people. I can see yeah. that you can mirror, you can move, you can talk, mm -hmm. like... Mm -hmm walk you know everything yeah, yeah you know I, I, I can see the attribute about you but this new gen z yeah sort of um generation are looking at a screen all the time mm -hmm. they're either looking at a screen editing mm -hmm. uh, applying for jobs yeah fbing linking <laughs> stuff um yeah. scrolling on their phones yes and they've lost all of the following they've lost stuff about purpose mm-hmm they've lost friendships yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. they've got friends online now uh -huh. or gaming friends mm -hmm. but it's not a friendship like hey how's your day so, how are you feeling what's happened and they're like in. uh what's going on <laughs> what's going on yeah. <laughs> you know that thing um they have no social life mm -hmm. and they have no real community so after yeah. school and college uni's done it's like where's the community where are mm -hmm. we meeting up so people try to meet up in like property networks and yeah. uh other sort of associates and mm -hmm. they try the people want to be a part of something because that's the, a human ability yes yeah but now the workplace is changing massively because it was a place where you went to work, pleased your boss, mm -hmm. worked really hard, went over and beyond. The workplace is not like that anymore. The workplace is where you have a community. Mm -hmm. right, all right, let's talk about this TikTok. This TikTok is this lady is like, follow me uh, <laughs> for my job today. You know, um, so oh, I walked into work, I... said hi to my colleagues. Oh, lovely muffin and this is what my jab gave to me i had a muffin checked out the scenery wall um yeah did a little bit of work and then i <laughs> went to this pottery class that uh, my work provided me for my mental health and boom 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 packed away for work okay and now i get to do what i've done I and there you go peace guys you know like, <laughs> yeah. see you later and it's like so someone Literally. growing up who's in front of a computer in front of a screen yeah is going um Right, so I need to go and get a job. 
job is I just got to do a little bit of work. I get to eat at work. Like, because that's the perception. The mentality, yeah. You know, yeah, mum's yeah. working in Tesco's, dad's out at work. Yeah. I'm alone. I'm in front of the computer. I might come from a single parent yeah. background. Mum's just trying to put food on the table. Yeah. Or dad, for example. That's what I'm seeing. Mm. So at work, it's becoming so emotional. Yeah. It's becoming everything like myself. So I'm upset today. Like, what's happened? My mental mouth, my mental health is not good today. So your job's got to take, take that on. It, that. it yeah. is changing, boy. Yeah. You, you, they start telling you your mental problems, your personal problems. Yeah. They start yeah. mixing everything. I'm not good today because this happened with my parents. That happened. You're like, you're here to work. Uh, We're here to do that yeah. task. You're mm-hmm. talking to me all about these things. Like, yeah. like, where's this going? Yeah, <laughs> balance again, isn't it? And it's trying to find like, it's like. <sighs> Even like I was saying to earlier, so like I met a guy at the gym who works for the US government, worked for the US government, no, sorry, worked for the UK government, then the US government, and he did a bit of body guardians. He actually met P. Diddy and loads of people like that. And um, he was telling me the difference in like their intake of people in that military position go into Syria, go into all these places that have got real bad conditions, you know, you know, like telling me the first time he killed someone. Wow. And yeah, like honestly, like I've had the craziest conversations with him and like just the mental strength. He says like at, at the at the start of each training course, they say to you, this is the opening line that I won't say anything else to you. This is all they say to you. They'll say 90% of you will pat, will will fail. And 10% of you will pass this course. The only thing separating the 90 and the 10 is your mental strength and your ability to mm. be just sort of not having any limitations, being limitless in your mind and thinking, if I want to climb up that hill with this three ton backpack on my back, I will do it. But if you already have the initial, God, oh, am I going to do this? Am I not? You're not going to do it. Not make it's it. all in your head. And he said the the amount of people that he's seen throughout the years just completely plummet. It's all about your brain. And some people, I think, inherently have it or inherently don't have it. And I think if you've got the ability to, like, look past your conditioned state of how you've been grown up and you think, no, like, I don't have to be this way. I'm going to... Like, I've got the ability, I've got the same structure, the same body as everyone else here. I'm going to go for it. Like, nothing's holding me back. And I think it's like in business as well, isn't it? That's how people succeed. That's how people don't. Mm -hmm. Some people have the vision all along, like, I'm going to make it. It's just when. Some people, am I going to make it? Am I not? At least I'll have alternatives of different jobs if I don't. And that's what separates them. It's all about your mindset. Mm -hmm. And I think with how the generations have gone now it's it's really like like you said it's like people don't have work mode home mode it's like intertwined now it's all everything (laughs) mode is all all the time it's like like my mum's job like she could be having the worst day ever but she just flips and she's on that desk and she's in a new world she's not in her world anymore she's in so how do you build that work mode that mental resilience where do you find out i want to become this person now where where, where do i find this you're 23 you're in that world where are you going I think the books that I've read have completely changed my mindset. So I know some of my friends watching this now are going to laugh, but Joe Dispenza, if you've ever heard of him before, has been like a massive, massive um, influence on my life. So always in the mindset, like everyone else, of I am the way I am. Inherently, I am, I don't know, more organized or less organized. And that's just how I am. And I'm going to have to live with that my whole life. But reading his book, the first ever book that I read, because I really didn't like reading when I was younger, um, I just thought the stories of Harry Potter and just fairy tales, I was like, what am I getting from that? But now I love reading because I love gaining knowledge from books to apply for my, to my own like actual life. And I read my first book of Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. I'd recommend everyone to watch to watch this, to read this, that have attributes that they don't particularly love or they want to change or they want to enhance. So like it goes through all this the science of like your brain and like it's every single point that he makes is backed up with scientific evidence. Like he's a neuroscientist. So he's been doing this for like his whole life. Mm. 
And it's just the ability and the realization that if you're not a certain way, if you weren't born with them, you know, characteristics, you can form them. And with consistency through like meditation and through different lifestyle changes and consistent telling yourself the thoughts that are in your head, like separating yourself from your thoughts and not identifying with your thoughts. So when your thoughts are always like, oh, you, you're stupid, you're never going to do this. It's not really you. It's a, it's a conglomeration of when you were one to whatever age you are now, your parents, your, your organization that you've been associated with, your social group, it's all of them different factors that have created who you are it's not actually who you are. Do you know what I mean? So like separating yourself from that and thinking, no, like I'm not my thoughts. I'm going to change my thoughts. And if you consistently do that on a repetitive scale, it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of conscious thinking to not let them thoughts slip and to think, actually, no, I'm not stupid. I'm going to erase that thought every single time and replace it with something else. Now, a lot of people might think, oh, that's really like, sounds really straightforward, but it takes a lot of conscious awareness every single day of your life. And we're not used to being conscious. We're emotional beings. Yeah, exactly. And we're on our phones all the time. If we feel sad, we're like, I don't want to feel like this. I'm just going to go on YouTube or Facebook and just ignore it. But when you like sit with that feeling and you try and work out why that is, you realize that it could be from an event that happened when you were like six, but you don't remember it. It's just programmed into you. So it's like when you go to sleep, it's like I started doing this thing that um, there's this guy called Bruce Tipton, if you've ever heard of him. He's really, really amazing. Like tells you all about the science of the brain and what happens when you're asleep. So everyone knows that you go into your subconscious when you're asleep and that's where your dreams come from and all that sort of stuff. So your brain never sleeps. So when I'm asleep, I'll have like recordings recordings playing that are all positive, like I am this, I am that, and just loads of different positive things that are slowly making a difference to my life on a mm. consistent on a consistent level. Now, a lot of people would just think, oh, that's a bit stupid and what's that really going to do? <clears throat> but when you read the book and you actually realise that, like, these insignificant things aren't so insignificant and even meditation, you say that to some people and people are like, oh, God, I've got enough, like, weirdo, you know what I mean? Like, what is sitting there humming meant to do? Mm. But when you look into the science of meditation and how these people in, say, you know, like these monks, how they live and what they achieve through their mind and how much power they have inside of them through practice and consistency, it's crazy. And we live in a world where, like, it's like chat GPT. How stupid is that going to make people? Write me an email to this, do this, do that. I'm sure they're just bringing out more and more things to make us so stupid, not think for ourselves. So people are just like, like zombies, like they're just not there. Do you know what I mean? They're so unaware of what's going on. I mean, in like, in like 20 years time, people ain't even going to be able to write an email. (laughs) They're just going to be getting uh, to other people to do it. You need to think. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, what? Think. (laughs) What's thinking? (laughs) It will go wow. like that. I've never thought of it like that because I, I actually I went to uh, Cannes yeah, um, yeah. in France yeah, uh, for yeah, the yeah. Mipping shows. Yeah, it looked great. And sharing with a couple of colleagues. And then one of them was like, I've got so many emails to write. I've got so many things. So I went, no, here's chat GPT. Say, write me an email to a client telling the rates have changed and this is what you can do. And she goes, oh, oh you're God, joking. Yeah. You just freed up three hours of my day. I was like, cool. Um, yeah, also, you've got an app for this. You copy this, paste it into there, and there's that. And she goes, no, oh I don't need to go God. home and do my accounts at home. And it's like, yeah, it's I, thought, good. I thought of it as an efficient way. It, it but then efficient. on the other side, you are there's right. There's a dark side. You know, uh, there's a dark side to there it. <laughs> yeah. There I definitely hate. is. I don't know if you've seen Social Dilemma on Netflix. No. But that you. is so interesting. Again, I recommend Social everyone Dilemma. to watch that. It's ex-employees from YouTube and Facebook. Oh, wow. And um, Instagram and just the met- metaverse. Mm-hmm. And hearing all of the very like alarming sort of things that they're saying and how worried they are mm-hmm. about the way it's going. Wow. 
and a lot of like we just see it as oh I'm connecting with my friends and I'm doing this but like your attention is like the most valuable thing ever nowadays mm. and like if you're on your phone 12 hours a day wow. you're not doing anything else mm. unless it's efficient and you're mm. watching good stuff you're mm. you're building a business or something yeah. like that then fair enough Productive. but you're on TikTok flicking through videos I saw this really interesting fact the other day about every single you know they're very short so our attention span is just becoming worse and worse and worse it's like something like crazy like every time you watch a three second video and you're just flicking it's like your your attention span decreases by like 2.25 percent every single video you watch so it's like in class in when you actually have to study people can't do it anymore and I genuinely I look really quite probably look a bit too deep into all these things thinking it's for a reason that like they're almost trying to make the population even more employable in a sense so they don't think for themselves they don't want to own businesses they don't want to get financially free they're just workers in Tesco in Asda and because they can't even concentrate on a textbook to self-teach themselves mm. because they're just used to watching three second videos and they can't deal with any longer because they can't sit themselves down and actually discipline themselves to do that so it's like making people just stupid and mm. and it's making I think it's making things don't get me wrong like you said three hours free she can then dedicate them three hours to yeah. something way more productive so there's so many good things about it but at the same time a lot of people are just using it mm-hmm. way too often. I think the, the level of understanding needs to mm-hmm. be there. A lot of yeah. people going, I know what I'm talking about, saying yeah. you something, and it's like connecting dots in a puzzle, but yeah. they don't understand why the need, yeah. you know? And that's the scary thing, because yeah. where are we leading to? Exactly. And why would it be free? Like They're not ever going to give mm-hmm. a system out for free if there's no... Wow. impact for people in like wow. higher higher positions you know what I mean when something's free you've always got to look wow. into it's like Facebook <laughs> and Instagram and everything it's every, it's all free like I'll oh, just download so why it for do you, free why, why do you get invited to um, some networking events for free well like canapes and drinks because normally nine times out of ten sometimes you get a sold course at the end of it mm-hmm. which I've been to quite a few times where they've sold a course or they're doing something but other times, say like, I don't know, like some people do genuinely just want to sort of create a nice network of people. Mm. And it's a sort of beneficial for them as well because they're meeting people that they'd never normally meet who could they then do business with. Mm-hmm. So in some aspects, it's, there's not always a reason <clears throat> towards why it's free. But it's like I went to this one uh, with this property company and it was free. And then it was 250. I did the 250 weekend. I was very, very early on in my stages of my, mm-hmm. you know, property journey. And I did learn, you know, the fundamentals, the very basics of how to create a deal, what's your ROI, and different things like that, which was beneficial. And I definitely wouldn't have taken that back. But then after that, it was like 35 grand. And how funny is so a a, a sort of a task, if you like before they announced it was 35 grand was to up your credit card increases or up your limit on your credit card so they'd get us to call our credit cards and see if we could get an increase on them obviously I'd have my credit card for like not that very long so they were like no this is not happening that was a good thing then yeah but then other people were getting like especially from Amex Amex are really good for that they'll they'll increase your credit card like very very without any sort of persuasion And there was people getting like 20K increases on their credit cards. And then an hour later, it was like, ah, 35 grand, boy, you can use your credit card now. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? So it was like all these little things. And I thought, "Mm, like... I've heard the one that goes, who's got a £10 note in their wallet? (sighs) And people go, yeah, I've got £10. So give me £10, here's 20. Yeah. And it's like, give me £10, here's 20. Yeah. And it goes... Don't question it. When an opportunity comes there, just take it. Just take it. it. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what you got to do. Yeah. Don't question this. Just yeah. 
when you, if you want to take action, that's what it is. Don't question it. Yeah. So um, I hope you had a lovely day. And by the way, I've got this special course that's been discounted by half price for yeah. instead of 10 grand, it's two grand today, just today to help you guys. Don't question it. Just take it. And people <laughs> yeah. are like running to the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been in that room. I've been in that room. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in that room What'd as well. What do you think of it? And yeah, no, it's just the... It, it's sad because a lot of people that I spoke to in that room were single moms. They were workers for the NHS. They were at a bit of a loss. And they were like, I don't know what to do in my life. I'm not happy. And I'm like, I'm desperate in a sense. Mm-hmm. And when you hear that eight grand off a course, it's like, oh my God, I have to do this. It's now or never. What's the lesser of two evils that person at the front might be thinking? I am helping you make that move to yeah. start on a path, yeah. which I'm going to give you fully the information for. Yeah. The contracts. Yeah. Don't really, like the gray area is, have you got the resilience to get through yeah. this and the mindset to do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to make you be accountable. You're going to spend money that you're going to want value back off. Back I've off. given you all the information 100%. to go and take that step. Is that the lesser of two evils? See, in some cases, I would agree with you. And I have spoken to people that have met people there who have then teamed up who have made loads of money but then again I've met people that have given the same energy but just not fallen on the right opportunities and I think it is that risk that risk of taking Mm. okay well it's either going to work out for me or it's not but if you keep going consistently consistently because when you spend that amount of money you don't want to stop because that's a lot of money for a lot of people Mm. And so a lot of people are like, no, I'm not going to stop. So in a psychological point, it's almost, it is beneficial because I guess if you've like, oh, it's 250, I'll oh, just make that back. So it's fine. I'll just carry on with my day-to-day job. But then I guess that sort of mentality of, oh my God, okay, this is 10 grand. This is a lot of money. This is like half a year's wages for some people. I have to do it. It's either I don't or I'm just literally going to be in a lot of debt for a long time. So like you said, it's um, it's giving people that push, but then, then life gets in the way. And sometimes if you're at that stage of life where you've done this and then you're at the point where your mentality is good, you know, you've spent the money, you get in there and then like, I don't know, a massive family horror happens or something like that, something that you can't foresee mm-hmm. that just brings you all the way back down again which then you're going to have a negative opinion on everything that you've ever done. Mm. So it's like people are out there going, oh, it was a scam, it was this, it was that. But everyone's position and where they've come from and what they're doing is literally worlds apart. Mm. So like me as a young girl, I don't have any commitments at all. I've got no children. I can literally do whatever I want. Whereas someone who is sort of with kids doing, you know, housewife, husband, whatever, you know, they've got a lot more to think about. And maybe they they sort of, they come in waves, don't they? There's benefits to me, but there's negatives to me. There's positives to them and there's mm-hmm. negatives to them because I've got nothing to lose. <coughs> they've got a lot to lose. So they're probably a lot more, uh, this is it for me. Like, I have to do this. Mm-hmm. Um but then I just think it it falls on resilience. And like we said earlier, like your mindset. And if you've got that mindset of this is going to happen, like I'm 100% going to do this. I don't know mm-hmm. what way I'm going to do it, but it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then some people enter it like, shit, I've just spent that amount of money. It might not happen. What if I go into debt? What if this happens? They're all looking at the negatives, nothing to do with the positives. Mm-hmm. And then it's taking action and not keeping blaming all your external circumstances for the position you're in like oh well I've got to do this on Sunday and Saturday and I mean people are out there running like six businesses as well as going to the gym as well as making family time see you don't really have you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. you do have to look at your own life sometimes and just put the blame on you and be like and that's a hard thing for people to do that's like extremely hard and some people Mm -hmm. go through their whole lives never taking the blame Mm -hmm. and always putting that onto someone else because it's too like difficult for them to handle yeah. isn't it i hear you lucy um and a very valid points um 
Unfortunately, we have to wrap this up now. Yes, um, yes. We've been talking forever. I just had no this, is, say. this is just like been like a flash for me. I don't know how long it's been for you, but it feels like one of the quickest podcasts. Yeah, but we, yeah, we proper definitely. Put in some work in this yeah, one. yeah, I've loved um, it. And um, yeah, just before we wrap up, I'd like you look straight into your camera. Yes. And first of all, tell the audience your message that, you know, why they should sort of look, you know, be watching this sort of podcast, what value you're providing. And second, on how to follow you. Okay, so the number one is networking and the points that I've made about networking are crucial for I think anyone my age to do and I think the ability to not fall into oh, I'm this way, I'm that way, this is just how I'm going to be now. Be very, be very strict with yourself and be very self-observant and take the time and take the action to pour into yourself and read the right things and eat the right things and do the right things and you will see a massive, you will change your whole life. And I know that's a very, very big statement to make, but ever since I've done what I've done my whole life from a year ago is completely different now. And that's through all the things that I've been talking about. So read your self-development books, get out there and network and just be a nice person and just be passionate about what you do. And to follow me, um, I've got my Instagram, which is Lucy with three Ys underscore Taylor. I've got LinkedIn, which is Lucy Taylor. And Facebook, I don't really use that. And um, that's about it. <laughs> There you go, guys. I hope you really, really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed this, you know, being with somebody from a totally different generation to me. Um, and I've learned a lot also. So please smash the subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Leave Lucy a comment. I'll make Thank sure she you. gets it and she answers it. And share this with somebody who needs it. Don't be selfish. Yeah. And 89% of you are not subscribed. So smash that subscribe button. Do it now. Boom. Until the next time. Peace.